Kim and Mbappe won't just make Real Madrid a better team, but it'll turn them into an unstoppable force. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be taking a look at how Kim and Mbappe will fit in at Real Madrid, and what does it mean tactically for the likes of Jude Bellingham and Vinicius Jr. And also, will we see a return of Europe's favourite football formation, Carlo Ancelotti's Christmas tree? If you're new around here, smash that subscribe button. But anyway, let's get this party started. Kylian Mbappe has finally closed the PSG chapter of his life and has signed for Real Madrid. Something that nobody in the entire world of football knew was going to happen. Regardless, the move is extremely exciting. Not only does Mbappe fill a void that used to have the likes of Karim Benzema or Cristiano Ronaldo at Real Madrid, but we get to see Mbappe in a new league. And if Mbappe can score 35 league goals, we might be starting to recalculate which is the Farmers League in Europe. In all seriousness though, Mbappe is exactly what Real Madrid need. There is a bit of a hole in the team. Jude Bellingham, of course, has done really well this season, being the club's top scorer and top assister across all competitions. But there's been a bit of a hole for a main man, and Mbappe is certainly that guy. Since moving to PSG in 2017, only Robert Lewandowski has scored more goals than killing Mbappe, and Mbappe has played fewer minutes. But before we dive into the new look Real Madrid, we need to understand what Carlo Ancelotti has done with Real this season tactically. This season, Ancelotti has set Real Madrid up in a 4-4-2 diamond, or 4-3-1-2, allowing Real Madrid to be very, very fluid and relationalist on the ball. What Real Madrid tend to do is attack down the left-hand side. We'll see Vinicius holding the extreme width, Jude Bellingham being that kind of false 9, number 10 option, and Rodrigo operating as a kind of central striker in the system. Real Madrid like to focus the play down the left. What we see is Benjamin Mendy either holding the width or attacking that inside channel and Tony Cruz dropping to get on the ball in that classic left half space. What this means for Real Madrid is they overload a certain area of the pitch, allowing to dominate that area, creating opportunities and 1v1s and then in the final third there's a lot of freedom. Carlo Ancelotti isn't a Pep Guardiola, he doesn't drill in the same attacking play over and over again, he gives his attackers freedom which is going to be perfect for Mbappe. From a statistical perspective Real Madrid do focus that play down the left wing, only Las Palmas and Real Betis have added more attacks down the left flank than Real Madrid this season. But more importantly for Real Madrid and Kylian Mbappe, where they are so devastating is on the counter-attack. Off the ball, Real Madrid have defended in two shapes. The first one is that kind of 4-4-2 diamond that we mentioned before, with the outside shuttlers moving over to the flanks to protect the fullbacks. This sort of happened at the start of the season, but as Carlo Ancelotti evolved the team, what we started to see was a 4-4-2 being made up of either Vinicius Jr. dropping back and defending the fullback on the left-hand side, or if there was more attacking pressure, we'd see Jude Bellingham shuttle over and become the nominal left winger, basically allowing Real Madrid to sit as a 4-4-2 off the ball and then break and counter-attack. Not only does this get the best out of their quick attackers, but Jude Bellingham's defensive work rate is absolutely outstanding. From a pressing perspective, Real Madrid pressed in certain moments, but also were very comfortable at sitting a little bit deeper. Madrid ranked 8th in the Liga for PPDA, a really good metric from judging pressing. But even more devastating and great news for Kylian Mbappe, they rank number one for goals on the counter-attack and shots from high turnovers, showing how well Real Madrid can soak up pressure and then break with their pace and ball carrying. Before we dive into exactly how Kylian Mbappe will set up for Real Madrid, we've got to say our goodbyes to Toni Kroos. The legendary German midfielder is retiring after the Euros and Real Madrid will need to replace him in the starting lineup. For Carlo Ancelotti's Real Madrid, Toni Kroos was probably one of the best midfielders in Europe, ranking in the top 1% of midfielders for progressive passes, passes completed, touches, passes into the final third, switches of play, all the statistics that you want for a deep-lying midfielder. 
Not only that, but he also ranked in the top 2% of midfielders for assists. And but it is time to, to move on from Tony Cruz. He's been a legendary player at Real Madrid and he will be missed, especially from set pieces. In terms of replacements, of course, Luka Modric has been his kind of sub this season. He's been coming on in games. You know, they'll start with Cruz. He'll get subbed off in around 60, 70 minutes. Then Modric will come on and play that same ball playing role. But long term, I kind of expect Real Madrid to move on from Tony Cruz and Luka Modric. So I feel like the true replacement for Tony Cruz at Real Madrid is Camavinga, a player that was signed as a deep line playmaker for Ron. For Real, he's played left back, he's played central midfield, he's played all across the pitch. But I think now with Tony Cruz retiring, having him as that left central midfielder to kind of get on the ball and dictate the play, allow the fullbacks to get into the final third and play as his left half will be absolutely perfect for Real Madrid. Once again, overloading a certain area of the pitch. So we spoke about Tony Cruz replacements in this new look Real Madrid side. Where does Mbappe come in? So naturally, looking at the forwards, Vinicius Jr. is the clutch player. In the Champions League, goals and assists directly involved in 40 goals for Real Madrid in that competition. Rodrigo, of course, plays in more of a uh, you know striker in the system and setup. Expect him to be the player that's kind of pulled out with killing Mbappe coming in. In terms of overall role, potentially we'll see him as this, uh, you know, inside right player or alternatively we'll see him as the wide player and then Vinicius Jr. could be moved inside. One of the big things with killing Mbappe is he doesn't want to be the pivot. He doesn't want to be the target man. He excels with players like Olivier Giroud around him or Karim Benzema. Players that he knows that will receive the ball to feet, allowing him to make that run in behind the defence or getting turned and then playing him on the half turn so he can instantly attack. Jude Bellingham's been playing that role for Real this season. Of course, defending in a 4-4-2, but attacking in a 4-3-1-2 with Bellingham as this kind of like target player at number 10. He playing as almost like a traditional attacking midfielder, you know, receiving balls from any of the midfielders, getting himself turned, driving through, carrying on the counter-attack, and then getting himself in the box. He will be the perfect foil for Mbappe and Vinicius Jr., not only offensively, but defensively as well. Talking killing Mbappe, let's dive into a few statistics. Mbappe loves the left-hand side of the pitch. That's where he can receive the ball, and then he has options. He can either go down the, the byline and then cut inside or cross later on, or he can instantly cut inside and attack at the heart of the opposition's defence. You know, the classic Mbappe finish is looking for the far post and whipping it near post when getting in and around the penalty area. That's something you can do at Real Madrid, either from this left position or as that kind of central attacking player. But let's have a look at the data, and this is backed up. Mbappe is far more dangerous in the left-hand side of the box than the right-hand side of the box. Over the past five Liga seasons, he scored 39 goals from open play from the right-hand side of the box versus 67 goals from the left-hand side of the box. Not only allowing Mbappe to play in that zone, but giving Real Madrid a serious goal threat in that area. Moving on to the second thing that Mbappe will bring, and that is lightning speed on the counter. We all know that Real Madrid, especially in the Champions League, like to soak up pressure and then hit you on the break. With the pace of Vinicius and Rodrigo and the carrying of Jude Bellingham, that was a recipe for success this season. But in terms of killing Mbappe, again, so dangerous on the counter. 33 goals from fast breaks in the last six Liga seasons is more than any other player. And that's what Real Madrid are going to get. In fact, last season, he was so devastating, he scored six goals from just 11 shots from fast breaks, showing how clinical he can be when there's open space. He's got that ability 1v1 to not only slow you down and then explode like a sort of Lionel Messi type player, but he's also got the pace and the power to go on the outside like a Cristiano Ronaldo. That ability to slow your opponents down, pull off a trick, disbalance them and get a shot away is a key reason why he's so devastating on the break. And looking at the tactical side of things, why Real Madrid are so good is that 4-4-2 structure. As we mentioned, it can be interchangeable between Vinicius Jr. defending on that left wing and Bellingham being more of a you know pressing forward if for example Real Madrid need to deal with a deep line playmaker or alternatively if there's a threat from a fullback throwing Bellingham to that left wing and Vinicius high is such a recipe for success for Real. Jude Bellingham is arguably one of the most important defensive pieces for Carlo Ancelotti. It gives him the ability to destroy teams in certain ways with his physicality and his work rate and ability to win the ball back. His challenge numbers throughout his entire career 
career have been brilliant for an attacking player. But what that means for Real Madrid is they can go for the kind of Luis Enrique, Barcelona setup, where Lionel Messi would usually sit in a counter-attacking spot in the inside left channel. Suarez would put pressure on the ball and then Barcelona would counter-attack. Rakitic would do a great job shuttling out and protecting the flank. Real Madrid can do exactly the same thing, with of course Jude Bellingham being the player that's going to shuttle out to the wide areas and protect the flank, allowing Kylian Mbappe to sit in the inside left channel. Not only will that allow Mbappe to break in a super dangerous area, but it covers one of his biggest flaws. His lack of defensive work rate at times has opened up PSG in the Champions League. PSG have never really found a system and setup to fit Mbappe in. And Carlo Ancelotti is probably the perfect guy. Schooled in Saki's 4-4-2, this has been his default setup. It allows players to cheat in the systems. Think Cristiano Ronaldo at Real Madrid or at Manchester United, who would cheat on the counter-attack and then break through. PSG should have worked that out. Sitting in Mbappe as in a strike position and allow him to counter-attack and fly through. That gets the best out of Kylian Mbappe, but also hides his defensive work rate. When we're throwing in the Real Madrid players as well, Camavinga's got slightly more mobility than Tony Cruz. Of course, Cruz is a decent defender, but at the end of his career, versus someone like Camavinga that's very, very fresh, that can shuttle down, that's got experience playing left-back as well to cover that zone. When we're looking at Real Madrid in terms of their full-backs as well, having Mbappe in the team now allows them to continue to get away with playing defensive fullbacks. Mendy is one of the best 1v1 defenders versus a winger in Europe's top five leagues. And Carver Howell has shown his defensive awareness and ability to stop dangerous attackers and put them in his back pocket really well. You know, you combine that with Valverde's ability to shuttle out to the right flank and defend Carver Howell. Real Madrid are really set up to be a strong defensive side, allowing the likes of Kylian Mbappe, Vinicius Jr. and Jude Bellingham to really counter-attack and break through. This is the perfect setup for Real Madrid. And again, they could be interchangeable in how they, they work this setup in a sense of, you know, we could see them transition to more of a 4-4-2 diamond in certain games, uh, if that's a better defensive situation. And with Camavinga and Valverde now, being the outside shuttlers and the guys defending the flanks, it makes them a defensively a little bit more solid than having Tony Cruz as a left central midfielder in this shape. But expect the 4-4-2 to continue because I think that gets the best out of this Real Madrid defensive setup. So we've spoken about Real Madrid with their current crop, but where do they go further? I think one of the upgrades that you could look from this system is getting more attack-minded fullbacks in the final third. Mendy and Carvajal are very good defensively, but there's better fullbacks out there on the planet from an attacking perspective. And one player that's been heavily linked with Real Madrid who would be a brilliant weapon in games where Real have to attack is Alfonso Davies, one of the fastest fullbacks in the world, also an orthodox winger uh, by trade. He's someone that could provide that defensive stability, but also the attacking threat in the final third. Real Madrid should probably go towards more of the Zinedine Zidane uh, side, where fullbacks would provide the threat in the final third. Uh, your midfield would sit in the half positions, get on the ball, distribute it, uh, you know, control the play, and then get into those uh, final third areas to create overloads out wide. This would make Mbappe and Vinicius Junior dangerous inside players. Think Liverpool under Jurgen Klopp, your Mane's and your Salas. That's exactly where you'd want to see those two players. And Bellingham again operating as that pivot or central player, doing his best Roberto Firmino impressions. This would massively upgrade Real Madrid in attacking sense in terms of assists in the Champions League. Alfonso Davis, since joining Bayern Munich, is up there with the best in Europe. And if we take things even further, Danny Carvajal has been so good for Real Madrid. You know. He's won more Champions Leagues than any other player in the club's history with Luka Modric. But if we want to take a step forward, a player that's coming to the end of his contract is Trent Alexander-Arnold. And he would upgrade this Real Madrid team from an attacking sense at right back humongously. As we mentioned, Real Madrid are quite left-centric. They do like to move their team down and play relationist football under uh, Carlo Ancelotti. But what we see at times with Real Madrid is massive underloads on the right flank, leading to the likes of Carvajal or Valverde being in good crossing positions with space to open themselves up and put the ball in the box. And that's exactly how Trent Alexander-Arnold should be used for Real Madrid. Attacking down that left-hand side, underloading the right flank, Trent being there and becoming the crossing fullback. In terms of the Premier League, he's got more assists than any other fullback in the competition's history. And he would 
would be perfect for this Real Madrid side and setup. And moving forward with two flying fullbacks and Alfonso Davies and Trent Alexander Arnold would be very, very frightening for most teams in European football. Which leads us on to our final topic of conversation, and that, of course, is the Christmas tree. The return of one of the greatest systems in European football, AC Milan, with Kaká, Seydorf, Inzaghi, Gattuso, Perlo, was so, so dominant. Of course, we've not even mentioned the likes of Endrick, the likes of Rodrigo, and, of course, Arda Gura, who are all going to be in the Real Madrid squad and could all do brilliant roles for the team. Real Madrid would have to reorganise. Chouameni would probably lose out to the bench, Camavinga would become the central deep lying midfielder, Bellingham would drop into a left central midfield zone and what we could see Mbappe and Vinicius Jr playing off Endrick, creating the Christmas tree. Of course, defensively, the Christmas tree would drop into a 4-4-2 with one of the wide players dropping in, but you'd have two false players inside and again, the width would be created by fullback with both um, Alfonso Davies and Trent Alexander-Arnold in 2025 providing the width. This would be a devastating team. Real Madrid would be playing with a natural number nine. Jude Bellingham's uh, work rate and creativity and goal scoring would be in midfield now. And Mbappe and Vinicius Jr. would play in the inside channels. This would be a frightening proposition for any team to deal with. Whether we see that with Carlo Ancelotti's diamond and Christmas tree, or alternatively, we see it with a man that's rumoured to be moving to Real Madrid that year, and that is Chabi Alonso. And thinking about Chabi Alonso and what he's done at Bayer Leverkusen, you know, the unbeaten run of 51 games, narrowly missing out on the treble, with this team, we could see some incredible next level football. But anyway, guys, where do you think Kylian Mbappe will fit in at Real Madrid? Do you think he's going to be playing as this kind of striking role we've been speaking about or more as a traditional winger? Anyway, it's going to be very, very devastating. I've been Statman Dave. Subscribe new. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?